Well, hello everyone, Dan Herd with Dan Herd Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, where the heck have you been? Welcome to my channel. I am back here at the Trout Creek Mine for the final week of operation. All our digging is done, all our sluicing is done. It's time to clean up, time to evaluate what we've done, time to go over what we've done wrong, and just show you the overall operation from start to finish. We've got a bunch of work to do here, so wish us luck, and I hope you enjoy. Now one thing that happened this week is we had our friendly neighborhood mines inspector. Hi Craig. Come up and inspect the mine. See well, what we were doing right, what we were doing wrong, and make sure that we were within our permits and doing uh, everything we said we were going to do. And no illegal mining of any sort. And I just wanted to let you know a few of the things that he discovered, let us know, gave us some suggestions and what the results of that were. Uh, biggest concern when he's looking at placer operations in general is that there's no dirty water making it back to the river, plugging up fish habitat, and that there's no hydrocarbons, oil, grease, gasoline, having any chance of making it back to the river. So that was the first thing he looked at. And he said, we get an A+. Our tailings were really well done. Our tailings pond was really well contained. No chance of overflow, no chance of anything getting back to the river. And we had, you know, gasoline spill kits around the pump, so our gas cans were in kits. We did everything on that aspect perfectly. He had one quick suggestion for us, and that's my old bobcat. It doesn't really leak, but when you walk by it, you smell the hydraulic oil, you smell the diesel, you smell it a bit. And he suggested that at the end of the day, each day, we park it on a tarp or something, just in case there are a few little drips. It currently does have one leaky cylinder that we contain the, the tiny, tiny leak with a rag. And then when that rag gets saturated, we switch it out for a new one. But it's only like a couple drips every day that come out of it. We just, you know, making sure that that stays safe. You can see a little bit sort of of staining around where it is a little bit ugly. And that's probably what is smelling what he smelled. But if you look underneath it, there's no drips hitting the ground anywhere. Uh, there's no drips coming off the unit onto the tires. There's no dripping or leaking. It's just an old ugly bobcat. So it smells a bit of diesel and oils. Safety equipment and safety stations and the muster point were perfect. He loved that we had everything thought out in place, labeled. Safety wise, he loved it. He did make one suggestion for safety for us as well. It wasn't something serious enough that he had to put an order in on us or, he just, or anything like that. He just suggested that having a pit this size right beside a road, we should probably have a berm between the two of them, just so that the bobcat could never accidentally roll over the edge. So we went and put a berm in there right away got to keep the inspector happy. Anything the inspector says, we're going to do right away. That was just a suggestion, but we did it. And the last thing that he asked us to do, he did actually ask us to do this. When I put the permits in for this mine, I didn't have the whole plan sort of figured out in my head. In fact, when I put the permits in, Andy wasn't even part of the operation at that point. And because Andy is our mine manager up for this site right here. The inspector asked us to contact the mines office and make sure Andy's name got put officially on the permits. So I did that the very next day. Right mine manager? Right. Next time we'll know. Now we have three days before the excavator has to go back. So we have three days of, you know, a big machine for cleaning up. Our first job here is going to be to fill in the tailings pond. Now, hopefully we, you know, thought it out enough ahead of time that filling in the tailings pond will be easy. We piled enough tailings, coarse tailings and a bit of fine, just be beside it that we can just park the excavator right here, reach in, drag it over, should fill it right up. We'll grab some woody debris and some topsoil from around, drag it over top, and this will be an easy, easy reclamation. One thing that Andy was concerned about is he said the, the ground here is all the, is not taking water very well. So this is like a couple days old and it's not sunk in. So as he pulls that in, it's going to overflow the road and overflow into the forest. But we are a long ways away from the creek. So, and it is sinking in well over there. We should have no problem of it getting back to the river. We will watch it carefully. We'll watch the first few spillovers and make sure that they sink in nicely and that it's not gonna skate across the surface. 
because there's still a lot of water there and that's going to displace it. With a lot more fine tailings than I actually expected from this operation. These will pick up with the bobcat and take back to the main pit and fill in the main pit with these coarse or the fine tailings over here. And then we'll level everything out. We'll make the road passable again and make it nice and pretty in here. The trees on the side will slowly encroach back in on the road and this will end up being an easy reclamation as well. I do have to get rid of my old equipment before I go. Now the wash plant area here, uh, we're gonna leave as a wide spot in the road. We're gonna flatten it all off, make it look nice. We're gonna leave a wide spot in the road here for now. It'll be, end up being a perfect little camping spot for campers, recreational people and whatnot. But in the end, we'll probably revegetate the sides and leave the road through the middle. But for now, we're gonna leave it flat. It is a five year permit. So we have lots of time before we have to make it a perfect reclamation. And we don't know if we're gonna use this spot in the future. So we'll flatten it off, make it look pretty, and leave this as just a wide spot in the road. I'm a little wet and muddy after that last rock. <laughs> but I have to run off. I'm gonna leave Andy to his reclamation here. He's doing a fabulous job of it. I like what he's doing. It'll definitely keep the ministry happy. I gotta run back to town though. I will be back in three days to check on Andy's reclamation, to approve it, and to, you know, go over the totals we got, show you all the gold. We'll do our gold split. Andy will take his share, I'll take mine, and talk a little bit about things we learned along the way, things we do differently next time, recommendations for the future, and I'll have an interview with the miner himself, Andy Thrax. Anyhow, I'm back to town, but you'll see the rest of this video right here. I'm back for the final day at the Trout Creek Mine. I've just come back to load up the rest of my gear. Just finished loading up the Bobcat and my gear into the truck. Checking on the reclamation, see how Andy did. We'll talk a little bit about gold, talk about what we've done. It's the final day at Trout Creek. Let's go have a look. This is one reason I like working with Andy. He does such a great job of cleaning up after himself. This reclamation of our main pit is perfect. Yes, the ground level's down four feet from where it used to be. That was expected. Put all the topsoil back in place put all the wood debris back on top of it. This is great. 
we won't actually plant any trees in here until fall. We're in the middle of a heat wave right now, and they would just die if we tried to plant them right now. And he has done a fabulous job. And for the wash plant area, he has contoured the bank back down to the road, uh, where we are keeping all of our uh, pay dirt for processing. He has put more, you know, of the wood debris that we had to take down while we were mining over the surface there to help promote new growth and leave a little spot for critters. Andy, you're amazing. Now for the tailings pond, you would have seen us filling that in already. It's all filled in except for a little ditch along the back. Now that ditch is only like a foot deep, if that. And that's because if I'm coming up here with the high banker, it's going to give me a nice safe spot to use as a little tailings pond with my high banker while still keeping the sort of terrain the way it was. And we have resurfaced the existing road, the road that was here before us, with our fine tailings, gave it a nice flat surface, flattened it off the bobcat, sort of returned the road back to a nicer state than it was before we got here. And again, come fall, we'll come up here with some seeds and plant some stuff and transplant some trees into certain key areas. What a month it's been. Eight hours from now, all of our gear will be gone, all traces of humanity will be gone, and we'll let nature take back over our mine site. That will regrow in no time. If you are worried that we have lost our shirts on this operation, don't worry. We had this testing operation budgeted. It was planned. As part of a mining company's operational budget, they have to put money aside for testing and prospecting and all of that. And we had done that. We knew this operation was going to cost us a certain amount of money, and we were not expecting anything in return to pay for the operation. Anything that we get in return is just icing on the cake. And we did get a fair good chunk of icing here. Wasn't enough to actually pay for the operation, unfortunately. That's part of prospecting for you. So those people that are worried, I have lost my shirt or I squandered a fortune doing this. It is all part of the plan. And Operations like this, testing operations like this, give us a good idea whether we're gonna mine further, whether we're gonna spend that fortune, spend $100,000 to try to make $500,000, or if we're gonna leave, you know, the five to $10,000 test alone and just leave it at that. And that determination is still to be made. Anyhow, let's start looking at the gold. Let's hope that this vial right here has at least an ounce of gold. That would be about a quarter of the expenses we endured doing this test. So here's the moment of truth. Did we get one ounce of gold? We are hoping, we are thinking that that's one ounce of gold in there. I had to grab Andy's scale because mine only goes up to 20 grams and we're hoping for 31. Let's see. Oh, let's get the close up on that while we pour. Here we go. Oh, I'm hiding the numbers. You can't see the numbers. I'll do this again when you can see the numbers going up. Oh yeah, here we go. What does it come out to? Come on, 31. Oh, we can't read it. 30.4, we're half a gram off. No! Here's some of the bigger pieces we found during the month, including one very crystalline little nugget straight from the rock. That's a beautiful flake, that one. And that one is very rusty. Again, straight from the ironstone laid out like that you could almost assume that was like four ounces of gold but that's just one ounce so if we take the 30.4 grams of gold and divide it by the 250 yards we ran, it equals 0.12 grams per yard that we were getting, which is about half of what we thought we were going to get. We thought we'd get 0.25. We ended up with half of that. So our $500,000 deposit is actually only about a 200 or a $250,000 deposit. Well, there we go. The gold 
from the Trout Creek Placer Mining Project of 2021. Okay, Andy, we're done for the month. Let's talk gold split. Yeah. Yep. Common question I get from people on my YouTube channel is how much do we split the gold versus the claim owner versus the miner when I bring people out panning, all that kind of stuff. If I've got friends coming out panning with me, they keep everything. But we talked about this ahead of time and because uh, the claim owner needs his split of this, the miner needs the bigger share because he has to pay for everything. So we decided on a 15% split. I'll take 15%. And he keeps 85% and that goes towards, you know, paying our bills because the gold here did not even come close to paying either of our bills. No. Unfortunately. <laughs> so let's split it off and see what it looks like. So I separated off the biggest pieces for Andy to keep. Then I just went through the pile and took pinches sort of all the way back. So I got a nice variety of sizes, pickers, small stuff, everything. And there's the gold I will be taking it comes out to 4.56 grams. And those pickers there will be the pickers I use in my nugget and picker pay dirt bags. If you want some of my gold, check it out on my website, www.danherdprospecting.com. Well, there you go. My cut comes out to about $330 in gold and Andy's cut comes out to $1,921 worth of gold. Not enough to pay our bills, but enough to keep things interesting. 26.69 grams, 4.6 grams. We both go home with a little take. And dump in his cut. Isn't it pretty? Tell me when you're ready. We're ready. You missed one. <laughs> one little flake goes back home. And there's Andy's take. A beautiful big vial of gold. Wish it were bigger. Just don't know if the sun is better or the shade is better. Yeah. Well, we are done here at the Trout Creek Mine. I will be interviewing Andy Thrax about his operation, his experiences, and where we go from here. But that will be in its own video by itself. So for now, I'm going to say bye. Big thanks to my patrons for your support out there. Big thanks for everyone for watching. And until the next video, the interview with Andy Thrax.